Joining me now, Doug Herbert, our international affairs commentator. Doug, uh, what's this done to the Conservative Party going ahead with talks with Jeremy Corbyn? Well, the Conservative Party was already torn apart in implosion, if you will, and this is just raising the fury level, uh, you know, one notch higher, dividing them even more. Look, you could argue that everything we're seeing right now, this whole announcement, this is what we should have been seeing at the very beginning of the process, way back in 2016, just before Article 50 was triggered. This is the process we should have been seeing, the cross-party uh, options reaching out across uh, the aisle, trying to find some sort of workable, viable compromise. A lot of what we're seeing now is the fury of, of the Brexiters is really they have themselves to blame. Uh, they essentially, the hard Brexiters in, in, in the Conservative Party, took Theresa May hostage. She was willing to be taken hostage by the extreme wing of her party, and we've reaped the consequences of that very belatedly, and not the 11th hour, but, you know, two minutes to midnight, all of a sudden, the about face and the reaching out to Corbyn. I, if I have to analyze it, I don't think the talks are going to work. I think these, the, the, trying to hammer out a compromise between these two leaders who are so much on very different pages, even though she says they share the, the, the shared goal of wanting to have a Brexit, I just don't see it happening. I don't see a compromise that will be palatable to be able to pass the House. Uh, being able to be hammered out between these two, um, especially when that would include a customs union or a much softer Brexit, of which we know May has never been uh, uh, an advocate. Um, what I do think we should pay attention to is the part of her announcement yesterday where she said, if I fail to reach an agreement with Jeremy Corbyn in, in, in these talks, then it will be up to Parliament to decide. So she will basically be handing over and says, and I will respect whatever choice they make. So look beyond these talks with uh, between May and Corbyn. Look beyond it. It's, let's, let's go to tomorrow's or the day after's headline already. And look beyond what the Parliament's going to do. So I, don't, I still don't think, um, when you say, so what's going to happen next? As much as I don't know, if I were to try to predict anything, I would say that we are looking ahead to Parliament, yes, taking back control because these talks are bound to fail in some shape, way or another, and uh, perhaps having that yes, that elusive public vote, that second re referendum once again coming up as a very plausible alternative, and yes, also the UK being forced willy-nilly perhaps to go into and participate in those European elections, i.e. with a longer delay, which May is not on the record right now as wanting or seeking. She's talking about an exit deal on May 22nd. Right. Uh, the EU, though, bring it back to April. Exactly. Look, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker has been uh, speaking in the past few minutes, and uh, the, the, the president of the European Commission, he couldn't be clearer. He says there will be no short delay, i.e. a delay until May 22nd, which is a short delay, the one that Theresa May is seeking, if the House does not uh, approve that exit deal by the uh, crash-out date of April 12th. Uh, so what are we looking for? Let's go back to what I was saying before. I think I'm not saying there's a hidden agenda in the EU, but I do think it looks like the way things are going. The EU is not inclined, as it is, to grant Theresa May a short delay. She would have to literally show up at this emergency summit on April 10th with a real plan forward, that deal in hand, as we've been talking, that clarity that the EU is seeking. She would have to be there and say, hey, guys, here's clarity on a platter and serve it to them. And everyone, all 27 members, would have to swallow it. We already know how hardline Emmanuel Macron has been about this. They are going to be very skeptical, even given the fact that they they might be willing, some of the softer EU members might be willing to cut Britain some slack because they see it as the basket case, the sick patients, give them a little, give Britain a little time to deal with itself, which is why, get back to the original point, it looks like we're heading, if I were betting, it looks like we're heading to a longer delay, a longer extension well beyond May 22nd. And yes, May, uh, Theresa May very significantly in the past uh, couple of hours has not ruled out the possibility of the UK participating in European elections if everything else comes to naught. This is something she had never, ever said. So it's almost like you have to watch this not by the hour, by the second you have to, you have to monitor the statements out of, out of the top leadership and the government in Britain because it changes that quickly. So as of now, the fact that Theresa May is actually said she wouldn't rule out your European elections, even if she sort of meant that as a veiled threat, pass my deal or else, uh, it does indicate that all of a sudden that's back on the radar. So I think we're looking at a longer delay ultimately. I think we're looking at UK participating in European elections. I think we're ultimately looking at a public vote on what they'll be voting. That's anyone's guess. So there you have it. You could play this back like in two or three months to prove just how wrong I was. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much, Doug.